All right, welcome, and we're going to instruct our team on how to make prototype crowns the same day as preparation. So we'll need to open ExoCAD. As we do that, we'll have to tell what the system what we're going to do. So we put in our company, the patient's name. Ultimately, we're going to type in the description, and then we'll click on the teeth that we want to make anatomic crowns for. These anatomic crowns we're going to make out of acrylic. We'll have a pre-op model in this case. That way we can align to our smile creator. Click OK. Hit Control. And click on all the other teeth that we're going to be doing. Any teeth that are remaining that we're not going to crown, you can put in as adjacent teeth. And then click on a digital impression. This way when we save it, we go into design it, we can find our STL files from our trios impression. So we click on design, after saving it, it will open up the CAD software. Once the CAD software is open, it will prompt us to find the proper scans. So you'll have to find in the O drive, in our case, the patient's scans. Then it'll walk through a wizard. The wizard will help you step by step design these crowns. Now you'll see that our pre-op is not aligned because we did not start with a pre-op. We're using a pre-op that we obtained before we did treatment. So, you saw that we aligned the meshes there, or moved it, and we're going to go into expert mode, go into tools, and align the meshes. At this point, we'll turn off any scan that we don't like, so the antagonist there, and we will click on points of reference first on the floating scan, and where we think it is on the jaw scan. You can do as many as you'd like, uh, sometimes we'll do three, sometimes we'll do more. In this case, we did three, then we, or actually, we're going to do four, and we'll perform an alignment. It'll line it up. Okay, that's good. Then do the best fit matching. The best fit matching will correlate the scans the best that it's possible. So we liked it. Now we're going back to the wizard, and we can trim the, the scans if we'd like. We're not going to in this case, and we don't want to modify the scan data. Takes you to Smile Creator. At this point, we're wanting to merge in a picture that we obtained. So you click on Load an Image. It'll again go to the O drive where it's saved and grab a photo that you can now use the pre op scan to align with the photo. So you click on points of reference that are the same on the 3D image and the 2D image. Once you find the same points, you go to Next and now you can manipulate the 3D and 2D images until they're aligned. I believe it's a right click which will rotate the 3D image behind the 2D image and a left click will just move it without rotation and if you were to click on the two points of reference or two dots with the left click you can resize and and manipulate the 2D image as well. Once you feel like you've aligned it well then you'll click on next so you, you keep moving it until you feel like you're as close as you can get. You go next. Now we'll outline the lips. Um, you can start from scratch. You can you know, re eliminate these markers and just draw it yourself. Or you can just move the ones that it designates for you to the right position. Once you feel like you've outlined the lip, then you'll go next. And it'll cut that out so you can see that the 3D image is behind the lips. At this point, it's going to ask you to identify the center of the pupil of the right eye and the left eye. Once you click on that, you can move the reference lines around. Ultimately, that one that's being manipulated right now is where the incisal edge of the teeth would be. The one vertical is the midline, and we're resizing what we feel the, sh the size of the teeth need to be. Usually, you're anywhere from 70 to 80 uh, percent in those references. In this case, her two anterior teeth are a little bit larger, so we're trying to find the one that fits that space well. She ultimately likes how her teeth look, just wants them redone because some aesthetic concerns. So once we get the teeth in the basic position, which you can still move them around a little bit here in that window, but once they fit into that basic position, then we will go and move on. You click next, we can pick a color of the tooth, and then at this point, 
it's asking us to identify the margins of the tooth preparations by turning off that magnet you can just click it like trace it click by click again these are not as ideal as if we're doing a final impression so we're just getting this close because milled prototypes always fit better than chair side prototypes but don't spend tons of time trying to get it just ideal especially when the impression isn't as ideal as possible so go through each one, outline them, and then it'll move on to the next step. You noticed how it jumped. If I click the wheel on the mouse, wherever the, the cursor is, it will center the screen on that. So that's why it jumped quickly there a second ago, because I just put the cursor where I wanted it and right and, and clicked on the wheel and it centered the image there. Okay. So now we have those outlined and it allows to move the teeth. You can do it in the chain mode, which gets you in the basic position and all the teeth will move and resize together. And you see what we did there. We set the distal contacts and then position the anterior teeth. At this point, we clicked on simple and now you will just manipulate the teeth until you feel like they're in the right position. Centering the teeth, the midline, the tooth support, the inclination, the angles, everything you think is ideal as you would like for this particular patient. You click on that smile design view and you can see what those teeth look like behind the 2D image. Again, once you feel like you're close there, then you'll click move on to the next step. So once you click next, I believe it moves us on to the morphology or changing the shape and contours of the teeth. Oh, sorry. We are going to get the cement gap. And ultimately, you're making the cement gap as big as you can and expanding it as far to the edge as you can so that it's likely going to fit more easily. You don't do that on your final crowns, but on temporaries, it's a great idea to do. It ensures they fit more easily in the mouth. Then you click Next. And at this point, we are going to just change the shape and morphology either anatomically by tooth parts or cusp tips or entire tooth or ridges or the free forming, which has the add and subtract, add and remove, or smooth and flatten. The initial click is the add if you're on that one or the smooth if you'd like to flatten or reduce then you hit hold down shift while you click ultimately you get it as close as you can um, since the patient is still in the chair and waiting for these temporaries um, we don't spend a ton of time on these it ultimately gives a really good reference to what we'd like in the end um, but it is not the final result and they're still numb and waiting for us so we do this quickly Normally, a, a tooth design of this caliber, this six teeth, you know, takes about 10 minutes. Um, 10 to 20 minutes, honestly. So you go through and you just get them basically the way you'd like. And then we will move on to the next step, which is pretty much done. It'll morph this design into a model. Um, and at that point you will save it as STL files. I guess before you move on here you just want to check the occlusion and make sure it's not too heavy. Uh, well, I guess we've done that previously. Oh and cut the proximal. You always want to cut the adapt the proximal contacts. You just cut them so that if you were going to do them individually you could. If you didn't, they would intersect and not fit properly. I don't even think it lets you really move on unless you do that. So you cut them. We're not going to adapt to the pre, 
preparation and there's your restorations. At this point, you right click and save as STL files into the patient's folder there. You can, if you, whatever you see on the screen is what you would save as an as a STL file. So if you were doing all six, you would keep it together like that. If you were doing three and three, then you would click off the three that you wouldn't save and then turn them back on and turn off the other three and right click and save those. Ultimately in this case, we're gonna save it as one unit and that's what we did.